The person that values action, like real effort, real sincere, devoted, super consistent, enthusiastic effort, that person will know and appreciate receptivity better. Even if they're seen as opposites, they're so together that that's just how it is. So that it's not that you want to drop effort in order to find receptivity. That is not, that is not matching. That because it is through that beauty of your effort that the receptivity comes. And that, and so that's super important to know. And in some ways I would consider it, even though it can happen all different ways, but there, one definite progression is that it's through effort that you discover it. You know, and that, and you can start with it and build action, but even, and that's the same, the person that, that loves perfect repose, like true relaxation, true, true release of effort and just pure observation and awareness, that person also is in love with effort and strategy and analyzing and working and will. So they need to be. No, they are. Oh. That's what I'm saying, that you can't have one without the other. And if, so if you're only receptive, if you're only into letting go, like, you know, that's what yoga is. It's just you drop and you let go and it's, you don't try. You know, it's, it's about ease, it's about bliss. And you don't champion effort, you don't have that repose. It is not existing. And the same, if you, if you are only thinking that yoga is about applying your will, and you're, and you're right, some in Ashtanga seems to have more propensity for that, for very much, you're making it happen. And you, like, you drive through your series, you sweat, you learn, you know, pose by pose and all of this. And, um, but that, the person that also doesn't have that feeling of, wow of like, that this is meditation. This is the immovable spot. This is where action becomes un unnecessary or, or even further, just not even thought of, just completely left behind. Then, you know, they both, and one should show the other for sure. And that, and that is, it's good news to somebody, to somebody that's on either end, <laughs> really. Because if you really are super willful in your practice, then receptivity is not that far away. It really isn't. And, you, and you'll also see it in your writing and your directing. Like you made that separation, but they're both there. There's times when you charge ahead in your writing and then there are times when you back it off and you, you have to be more waiting and watching and letting something come. And, um, and, and that's the other thing about it too, is that, that action comes from receptivity. Like you understand where, to, what action is or where it was born from when you're receptive. Like you do the action because you're receptive and later you go, oh, that's why I externally rotate that leg. That's why I plant the foot that way. That's why I do this, the whole series of things. You, you go, you, you discover it from that place, that that's how the body organized itself. That's how your mind organized itself. And, that, and then that's a delight. It's like a, wow, right? Rather than my teacher told me this, I read this, I saw that. You know, that now, so now I have to go like this in this posture and I have to do this. That, that's a different, whole different feeling. And that, but what happens if you're, it's through just being there with enough presence and enough waiting and enough patience that you started to see it. Like you saw the rotation want to happen all by itself. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think that that's is, that can start to happen 
you know, once you they'll have a teacher that helps you, you know, craft. Yeah. And understand how your craft works. Yeah. But I, I mean, for me certainly that didn't just happen. I needed you to help me. Yeah. Right, and that's the gift. What a teacher is a gift is just because yeah. they can help you like with that, and um, and hopefully that's what they're working on is just showing you how to get there. When you're writing, the best writing comes obviously when you don't, when what you thought was going to happen is different than what happened, like something new came out of it, something unexpected. Yeah, well, that's where the high is. Yeah. That's where the art comes in. Yeah. But that's where you have to develop your craft in order for that to happen. Yeah, and that's the same though with the yoga posture. Like that you 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 can't just go in having it all sized up how to do it. You you have to go in and and like you said, apply your craft, but at the same time open to what actually can happen or does happen on that day at that time. And it won't be the same. And um and that's what receptivity is. It's, it has, it's that feeling of that it's something new is going to be found. Something, and that you're championing, championing the unexpected or the, the wonder of something new. And it doesn't have to be big either. It's, we can, we're talking about small things like just how, the, and that's how, like, for instance, you can do your standing poses for 20 years and still be enjoying them each day. That because each day, each time, the whole manifestation of everything is a little bit different. And that you, you've been open to that possibility that something's gonna be different and something's gonna change. And- um, Which I think can be a really, at least for me, and I think maybe with other Ashtangis can be a really hard idea to grapple because we're so sort of trained to think we have to do d -d 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 -d, you know, yeah, yeah. A through Z. Yeah, A through Z. <laughs> and so that, but it's it's horrible because then it, it means it's, it's like trickles all the way down to just even the smallest detail of a pose, the receptivity of it. Yeah. You know, like you don't want to get caught in that trap. Of what? Of... Of staying. A through Z has to be the exact same every single day because then you might even miss the very, very small changes that can happen. Yeah, I know. Well, and also that if you think of it all the way through, then the, the need to get from A to Z is partly the fear of getting stuck at A. Right, yeah, right. So that, I mean, and really, if you follow it through, I mean, it can happen. You could act literally only get to samastitihi and be so absorbed in that and so like seeing all the nuances and being so receptive to it that you never go to the next. And so... Oh, no, Tanya, that's a horrible thought. <laughs> that's a horrible thought, right? right. Which, because it, it like flies in the face of all your ideas of like achievement and success and like progress, you know? There's six series, David. Yeah. And, um, right. and so... But it's true. You could find some pretty amazing things in Samus Heat if you're just... Well, and that's why I, like, I do love to see a student like jump back from a standing pose and actually stop there. For, it doesn't have to be for five minutes, but for a moment and regroup and think and see. And you can see the quality of work that happens when somebody does have that sort of reflection and that receptivity in the moment to what they're doing. And that there's the, that space for perception and for reorienting and, um, and how cool that is. And, the, and it's, it's true, then it's a very dance, right? Because it, it, you're aware of tempo, you're aware of rhythm, of timing, but you're also aware of that immovability, that, wow, place that is not action, that, that action is deterring. Yeah, if you're just mindlessly working to get to Z, because that's what you do, that's gonna... It's gonna dead end. Yeah. Mm -hmm.